Hello and welcome to my second video of my exoskeleton project. Now, after the first video, I decided instead of doing each individual part and then combining it together to make the first exoskeleton, it'd be necessary to do a pathfinder. That way I could keep it as simple as possible, find out the minimum amount of movement that you can get away with, uh, the minimum amount of joints, the simplest joints. Also, any mistakes I made, I'd then find them early on. They could be correct in all later ones that are probably going to be more costly. So in this video, I'm going to go over some features of the Pathfinder, what went right, what went wrong, what I'm going to do on the next one. And after I've explained some stuff, I'm going to put it on and see how much room I want to get out of. I thought I'd start at the floor and go up. Starting with the boot, this is what made me decide to do a Pathfinder in the first place. Because I spent far too many hours trying to get this right. And in the end, it obviously doesn't fit very well, but that's mainly because I didn't have a welder that would do it at the time. And it obviously hasn't got a proper ankle joint yet. But with the time I was spending on it, I decided to move on and just have it as a, a piece to test. The idea of it is this would attach to the knee brace. It'd all come forward, all the boot on a hinge, and you'd step into it and then fold it all back down and it attaches on something like that. However, even though this is twin laid on the inside in different thicknesses to try keep it light, I put a lot of holes in it, it was still far too heavy, it's far too big for what would just be like an interior exoskeleton. Any plate over the top would want to come way later anyway. So on the next one, I'm going to design it so it's basically a sandal instead of a boot. So you're basically taking this top bit off. So I'll just have the base. And then I have some designs have springs in the sole to make it a bit more agile. I would like to note that this boot isn't even remotely finished. Honestly, the time I spent on it and the different designs took far too long. In the end, I just kind of gave up and started on the new design which I've already got some CAD CAM files for. Moving up, it's basically just the leg braces I had in the first video. Uh, these were just a prototype version that I'd line about. Eventually I want to get rid of all the straps but realistically I'm going to keep the velcro straps for quite a while. Just it's so easy, just makes it easy to fit to you, keeps it simple. The only modifications I'm hoping to do to the knee brace is basically to put holes in or possibly extra parts to bracket the hip joints and however the, the footwear attaches on to the bottom of the brace, which again, hopefully it'll just be holes in the bottom, it'll bolt on and it'll all work as one. I'll keep the hinge joint fast because there's not really much on it. It's literally a hinge and a swivel joint that one way. And this, I obviously knew wasn't gonna be enough, but I wanted to see how much movement you actually need and how your legs actually move when you walk. Do they move in, do they move out? And I'll go over that more when I try it on. Moving on to the arm, I'm pretty pleased with how this arm brace turned out. There's not that much for me to change for the next design. Mainly I wanted to reduce this gap a little bit here. And I need to move these into different spots to fit my arm better, which you'll be able to see when I try it on. I decided to just do it on one side of the arms. It keeps it clear on the other side and because It'd be very hard to mimic your elbow joint with two parallel joints. Well, it just, it wouldn't match really. Uh, one joint, as long as it's strong enough, that's good enough for this. The chest piece came out pretty good. I made a couple of little mistakes that I'll go over when I'm wearing it, but I'm still relatively pleased how it came out for basically a first go out of aluminium. I have made all these pieces out of foam first and tried to test fit and see if it worked, which does save some effort and time when aluminium's slower. But nevertheless, I knew I'd make some mistake, and I did. The idea of it is you can just about see the hinges over the top. It opens up and goes over the top. And then to put it on, you literally pull the chest piece down. Currently, you have to slide it onto these bolts, put your nuts on. But that will be buckled down on the next version. And lastly, onto the back. I've got a belt that just mimics a weightlifting belt. And then for the spine, I was, again, struggling to work out how much movement you actually need because it technically needs to rotate around. It needs to rotate on its own axes and then it needs to bend sideways 
either way to give you full movement. I'll try to figure out how much movement you actually need and how much needs to actually be powered. So at the minute it's just got little brackets attaching exhaust bobbins which provide quite a lot of movement, probably too much. Onto the upper back, it's got a simple frame that bolts on to the chest piece and bolts on at the bottom. And then the shoulders actually went pretty well, better than I thought they would. I do need to put adjustment into these bars because they are too big for me. I've also got hinges just behind the shoulder bars that allow to pull your shoulders back. And I've got more hinges on your shoulders which allow you to have full movement of your shoulders and it actually works pretty well. Might be complicated to motorise but I'm sure I'll work out a way to do it. Right, I think it's about time to try it on. stuff works as it should oh that's fine the belt is a little loose i need more adjustment on the belt for it to fit better i'm the most pleased with the arm you have a good range of movement fits pretty well can only take my wrist so it all works well uh, the only thing i find is the straps are in slightly the wrong place which i've already adjusted the shoulders work well enough have a good range of movement all the way around can pull in can go out I do just need to have those bars adjust on the back because it does cause problems. Now, for the chest piece, one of the things that I made an issue with is these parts are too long, so they don't quite touch my chest. But also something that I never thought of, which is why I wanted to do a Pathfinder, is that that's my limit on how far I can go in, just because my shoulders hit the sides of the chest plate, which I've already got the file for that, and it's already all pulled in. The waist, have a good range of movement in from my side to side just with them bobbins but realistically i probably need them stiffer and just have more support so it carries the weight better the biggest problem is the hips really just because there's nowhere near enough movement i can't go out sideways i can only go forwards and backwards i was hoping i'd be able to go out that way a bit more and lift my leg sideways but that hasn't happened either. But I've already got some new designs ready for that as well. And lastly, onto the back, which you'll be able to see one shoulder isn't quite working correctly. And um, it's pretty much down to the bar length. But I still do have a good range of movement. It just all needs to be adjusted in. Again, my shoulders get stopped to be at the top. 
by the chest plate, but it's not too bad I've done that. Once I've got the back adjusted, all that should be alright. So that brings us to the end of this video. It all might look a bit rough, but it is a pathfinder. But hopefully you can see where I'm going to go with the design and how it's going to end up, at least on the exoskeleton side. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.